After a 28-yard Falcon punt, Al Hunter comes through with a huge run. McLean leads the way as Hunter rips off a 44-yard sprint to the Air Force One. Two plays later, Heavens bowls in for the score. Reeve kicks through the winner out of Slager's hold, and Notre Dame has the lead, 31-30. The game ends at that score, and Montana has again performed magic. Dan Devine's first team produced a record of 8-3. and three. Not what a lot of Irish fans wanted, but certainly better than what might have happened if the comebacks against North Carolina and Air Force had not come to pass. The 1977 season began very rocky for the Irish. Many believe Notre Dame would walk to the national title, but Pittsburgh fell in a struggle 1910 at Pitt Stadium. Then Ole Miss ambushed the Irish in Jackson 2013. Notre Dame looked like anything but a national title contender after two weeks. The third game was on the road against Purdue, where the Boilermakers would unveil their latest quarterback star, Mark Herman. Over 69,000 fans at Ross Age Stadium in West Lafayette see the Irish grab the lead at 14-10 as Rusty Lish finds Terry Urich for an 18-yard score. But Herman connects with Ray Smith on a 37-yard touchdown. Herman later adds another scoring toss and Purdue leads 24-14 at the half. Three first half scores and 254 yards through the air are Herman's statistics for the first two quarters. Notre Dame scores to make it 24-17. Then Herman makes a critical mistake. He throws to his right side, but quarterback Luther Bradley makes the interception. Bradley heads down the sideline for an apparent score, but Herman just trips up Bradley at the Purdue 35. Montana is at quarterback and looks for Ken McAfee. He connects with the tight end for 22 yards. He then hits his favorite receiver for 13 yards and the score. After the Reeve conversion, the game is tied at 24. Over four minutes remain as Montana leads his team toward the winning score. The deciding points come when Dave Mitchell cradles the ball as he goes over the goal line. Final score, 31-24, Irish. The wake-up call at Purdue would revive the Irish for the remainder of the season. USC would fall by 30 in the famous Green Jersey game, and the Irish would win the national title with a 38-10 victory over Texas in the Cotton Bowl. Montana and many of his teammates would return for the 78 season, and back-to-back -back titles were certainly possible, but it was not to be. After two weeks into the 78 campaign, the Irish were 0-2. Missouri upset Notre Dame at the stadium 3-0, and Michigan returned to the schedule with a 28-14 win also at Notre Dame Stadium. Then the Irish reel off eight straight victories, and they're going after number nine at the Coliseum against USC. The Trojans lead 24-6 when Montana rallies his team to lead 25-24. But a last-second field goal by Frank Jordan of the Trojans sends Notre Dame home with a crushing loss, 27-25. Notre Dame would face Houston in the 1979 Cotton Bowl with a record of 8-3. The story of the game begins with the weather. An ice storm freezes the city of Dallas, knocking out power and making the game questionable. The artificial turf of the Cotton Bowl is glazed, providing no decent footing, and the wind chill is well below zero. After scoring 12 points, Notre Dame surrenders 20 in the first half. Houston now has to only play 30 more minutes for an easy win. Joe Montana battles hypothermia in the locker room of Notre Dame as he guzzles chicken soup in an attempt to raise his temperature. Houston adds two scores in the third quarter to make it 34-12. The conditions and the margin of the score would seem to preclude any chance of a comeback, no matter how courageous a team might be. With seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter, Irish freshman Steve Sitchie blocks a Cougar punt. Tony Belden catches the ball in a covey of players and breaks out. He heads for the end zone. Montana hits Vegas Ferguson for the two-point conversion. Notre Dame trails 34-20. Montana adds another touchdown on a rollout run to the left. The two-point try is good as Chris Haynes 
breaks his pattern, and comes back for the ball. 34-28, Houston. Four minutes, 22 seconds remain in the game. Cougar quarterback Danny Davis needs a first down to quiet the Irish crowd and regain momentum. He looks into the secondary and has Willie Adams open, but the ball is late and Dave Weimer somehow flips it away at the last moment. Houston has to punt. Two minutes, 25 seconds remain. Montana takes the Irish to the Houston 36. Back to throw, he breaks out of the pocket and begins to run. The defensive pursuit catches up to the Irish quarterback. The ball is knocked to the turf. The Cougars recover. Now only a minute 50 is needed to be killed, and Houston will have the win. Notre Dame burns timeouts at 138 and 46 seconds left to play. It is fourth and one at the Houston 29. Houston coach Bill Yeoman goes for the first down. Davis slides the ball to Emmett King. King takes one step and is met helmet to helmet by freshman Joe Gramke. There is no gain. The Irish have the ball. 28 seconds remain. Notre Dame is 28 yards away from the goal. With no timeouts left, Montana gains 11 yards. On the next play, Montana hits Haynes for 10 more. Haynes applies a vicious forearm as he heads out of bounds. The fire is far from doused. Six seconds remain. Montana tries to hit Haynes, but the pass is incomplete. Two seconds show on the icicle-covered scoreboard. Montana takes the snap and fires for Haynes in the far right corner. Haynes catches the ball and cradles it to his chest. He lands inbounds for the touchdown. Time expires. The game is tied. All that is needed is the extra point. But in keeping with the theme of the day, that is also far from easy. Notre Dame is penalized for five yards as Dallas native Joe Yunus kicked through what appeared to be the winner. The placement must be tried again. Holder Greg Knaffel makes a good hold as the Cougars' rush is intense. Yunus somehow kicks the ball between the outstretched arms and punches it through. 35-34 Irish, and the game is over.